And now for our dinosaur of the day, Stegosaurus, which is not to be confused with Stegoceras, which is a pachycephalosaur and has a dome head. The name Stegosaurus means roof lizard or covered lizard, and it's because of its bony plates. It lived in the late Jurassic in western North America, though one has been found in Portugal in 2006. At least three species have been found in the Morrison Formation, based on 80 individuals. Stegosaurus was the first dinosaur named in the family Stegosauridae, so it's the type genus. And in the family Stegosauridae, Stegosaurus is the largest. Stegosaurus was found during the Bone Wars. Charles Marsh named Stegosaurus armatus in 1877, the type species, based on fossils found near Morrison, Colorado. At first, Marsh thought it was an aquatic animal, similar to a turtle, and the name roofed lizard comes from Marsh thinking the plates were flat on Stegosaurus's back like shingles on a roof. Lots of Stegosaurus fossils were found, and Marsh wrote many papers, and like with many dinosaurs, at first multiple species were named, but now there's only a few valid ones. Stegosaurus armatus, the armored roof lizard, was named based on two partial skeletons, two partial skulls, and 30 fragments of individuals. It had four tail spikes, Marsh originally thought it had eight, and somewhat small plates. It was about 30 feet or 9 meters long. It's the longest Stegosaurus species. And it's been found in Colorado, Wyoming, and Utah in the Morrison Formation. Stegosaurus ungulatus, which means hoofed roof lizard, is another species. Marsh named it in 1879 based on fossils found in Wyoming. And it's possible these fossils are actually Stegosaurus armatus, but the fossils found in 2006 in Portugal are considered to be Stegosaurus ungulatus. In 1887, Marsh named Stegosaurus sulcatus, which means furrowed roof lizard, from a partial skeleton. Many have thought that it's the same as Stegosaurus armatus, but recent studies show it might be its own species. The type specimen for the species had a spike originally thought to be part of the tail, but some scientists now think it was part of the shoulder. In 1887, Marsh named Stegosaurus stenops, which means narrow-faced roof lizard, and the holotype was found by Marshall Felch in Colorado in 1886. The species is known from at least one complete skeleton, so it's the best known. It had four tail spikes and broad plates, and 50 partial skeletons of adults and juveniles, a complete skull, and four partial skulls have been found. It was only 23 feet or 7 meters long, and it's been found in Colorado, Wyoming, and Utah. In 2008, Susanna Maidman and a team pushed to synonymize Stegosaurus stenops and Stegosaurus ungulatus with Stegosaurus armatus, as well as change Hesperosaurus and Wuhosaurus into Stegosaurus and renaming them Stegosaurus moose and Stegosaurus homheni. They also said Stegosaurus longispinus was dubious. According to them, there'd be three Stegosaurus species, armatus, homheni, and moose with Stegosaurus ranging from late Jurassic in North America and Europe to early Cretaceous in Asia. But most researchers don't agree with this. Some nomina dubia or dubious names and junior synonyms include Stegosaurus affinis. Marsh described it in 1881, but it was based on only a pubis. Stegosaurus laticeps. Marsh described this one in 1881 based on jawbone fragments. Stegosaurus duplex, the name means two plexus roof lizard, and Marsh named it in 1887 based on the large area near its tail that Marsh called the, quote, posterior brain case, but that's probably just Stegosaurus armatus. So it seems researchers have come to an agreement on Stegosaurus longispinus, at least it's a former Stegosaurus, Charles Gilmore named it, and it's now the type species of the genus Natronosaurus. Other former Stegosauruses include Stegosaurus madagascarensis, which was described in 1926 based on teeth found in Madagascar, but is now considered to be something else like a hadrosaur or ankylosaur. Stegosaurus marshi, described in 1901 and renamed Hoplitosaurus in 1902, and Stegosaurus priscus, described in 1911 and now the type species of Loricatosaurus. Kenneth Carpenter and Peter Galton published a couple papers in 2010 that Stegosaurus stenops may be a better type species than Stegosaurus armatus, since it's the best known, the most well studied, and has the most fossils as well as a near complete skeleton. Carpenter said there's debate on the number of valid species, and if you're a quote taxonomic clumper, you may only see one Stegosaurus species as valid since there can be so much variation in one species, like how all dogs belong to Canis lupus familiaris. I wonder what Jack Horner would think about that. He might try to lump them together. Maybe. <laughs> Most Stegosaurus fossils were found in the Morrison Formation. The Morrison Formation was semi-arid with wet and dry seasons and flat floodplains. And vegetation included conifers, ferns, green algae, fungi, mosses, horsetails, cichids, and ginkgos. And tree stars. <laughs> 
Other dinosaurs included Allosaurus, Torvosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, Camarasaurus, Camptosaurus, and Dryosaurus, and Stegosaurus was often found near Allosaurus, Apatosaurus, Camarasaurus, and Diplodocus. Other animals that lived in the area included snails, frogs, raven, fish, turtles, salamanders, pterosaurus, and early mammals. Matthew Mossbrucker found tracks that showed stegosaurs may have lived in herds among a number of different age stegosauruses. One set of tracks had four to five baby stegosauruses moving together, and another had a juvenile track with an adult track over it. Stegosaurus had pebbly throat armor. There were lumps under its neck to help shield it from predators, including Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus. Marsh at first thought Stegosaurus was bipedal because its forelimbs were so short, but then in 1891 he decided it was too heavy to walk on just two legs. Some scientists, however, think Stegosaurus may have been able to rear up on its hind legs using its tail to support its weight so it could eat higher up plants. Because its forelimbs were shorter than its hind limbs, it had an interesting posture. It probably kept its head low to the ground, so it probably ate low-lying plants and had a stiff tail high in the air. Stegosaurus' center of mass was probably near its hind legs, and that would allow it to spin more quickly and get its tail in between it and a predator when it needed to defend itself. Which reminds me of a uh, barrel racing horse. <laughs> I don't know how many people have actually seen this thing, but there's this event where you run a horse around barrels and the way you breed them is to have huge hind legs and all the weight near the back because that helps them turn around corners more quickly. However, Stegosaurus probably couldn't walk that fast, otherwise its back legs would overtake its front legs, so it probably had max speeds of 4 to 5 miles per hour or 6 to 7 kilometers per hour. Its hind feet had three toes and its forefeet had five toes, though the inner two toes had a blunt hoof. Stegosaurus and its relatives were herbivores, but it had different teeth and jaws compared to other herbivores, so it may have had a unique feeding strategy. Stegosaurus had peg-shaped teeth, not grinding teeth, and its jaws could only do up and down movements, and there's also no evidence that they swallowed gastroliths, so it's not clear exactly how they ate their food. It didn't have front teeth, instead it had a horny beak, which may have been easier to eat low-growing vegetation. Its teeth were small, flat, and triangular, and Stegosaurus possibly had cheeks to keep food in its mouth. In 2010, scientists did a detailed computer analysis of how Stegosaurus ate using two 3D models of Stegosaurus teeth. They also calculated the bite force and found that it was less than half the force of a Labrador retriever, so although it could bite through small young branches, it could not bite through anything over 12 millimeters in diameter. About half an inch. Fossilized stegosaurus teeth show more wear on the sides that were sharpest, so stegosaurus probably bit on a plant, pulled back its head, and then the teeth cut through the vegetation. It probably ate mosses, ferns, horsetails, cichids, and conifers, and it wouldn't have grazed on grasses. There was no grass around until the late Cretaceous after it went extinct. Stegosaurus was up to 30 feet or 9 meters long, about the size of a bus. In 1994, a subadult stegosaurus was found in Wyoming. It was 15 feet or 4.6 meters long, 7 feet or 2 meters high, and weighed 2.6 tons or 2.3 metric tons, and you can see it on display in the University of Wyoming Geological Museum. A 90% specimen was found in 2003 in Wyoming by Bob Simon, president of the Dinosaur Excavation and Preservation Corporation, Virginia Dinosaur Company, and Dinosaur Safaris. It weighed more than 5 short tons, 4.5 metric tons. Stegosaurus weighed more than 5 short tons, or 4.5 metric tons, but its brain was about 80 grams, which made people think for a long time that dinosaurs were not that smart, since Stegosaurus was one of the earliest ones found, until more recently, around Jurassic Park, when that came out in the early 90s. Yeah, and then they showed some other dinosaurs that were smarter, even though they still showed T-Rex not being able to see movement, which always makes me laugh. Stegosaurus had a long, narrow skull, which was small compared to the rest of its body. Its brain case was no larger than a dog's though its body was obviously much bigger. Its brain was thought to be the size of a walnut, but according to Kenneth Carpenter, director of the USU Eastern Prehistoric Museum in Utah, quote, its brain had the size and shape of a bent hot dog. Stegosaurus had a low EQ, or brain-to-body mass ratio, so wasn't the smartest dinosaur. Charles Marsh got a case of a brain cavity, also called an endocast, in the 1880s and showed that it was the smallest proportionally of all dinosaurs, at least the ones known at the time. Marsh described a, quote, large canal on the hip region of the spinal cord, which could fit something more than 20 times bigger than the Stegosaurus's brain. This led to the idea that Stegosaurus had a second brain in its tail to help control its body, especially when threatened. But this area has also been found in sauropods and actually might have been the location of a glycogen body, which is something found in living birds and scientists don't know exactly what it's for, but probably has something to do with energy storage. 
Stegosaurus is known from its plates and spikes on the tail, which is probably used for defense. And Sabrina and I actually have a replica model of one of those plates, which is super awesome. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Gives you an idea of just how massive this dinosaur was. Yeah, because the plate itself is about the size of my chest, (laughs) like my whole torso. So, and that's just a tiny thing sticking on the top of it. So. Stegosaurus had kite-shaped plates on its rounded back and two pairs of long spikes at the end of its tail. The plates may have been used for defense, display, and or thermal regulation. Had 17 flat plates, or dermal plates, that were osteoderms, or bony cord scales, similar to osteoderms found in modern crocodiles and lizards. The plates came from the skin, not the skeleton, and the largest plates were 2 feet or 60 centimeters wide and by 2 feet or 60 centimeters tall. There's been a lot of arguments over how the plates were arranged on Stegosaurus. Marsh at first thought the plates lay flat, but in 1891 said Stegosaurus had a single row of plates. Another idea is there were pairs of plates in a row along the back, which is seen most often in images, especially early ones before the 1970s, and you can see the Stegosaurus in the 1933 film King Kong this way. But there's no two identical size and shape plates that have been found for the same Stegosaurus. So another idea was that there are two rows of alternating plates, and many people had accepted this idea by the early 1960s, though some argue we don't see this in other reptiles, so how could it have evolved that way? Robert Bacher speculated the plates were somewhat mobile, and Stegosaurus could flip them from side to side to deter a predator from attacking. In 1914, Charles Gilmore said the spikes on the tail were for display only, but Robert Bacher said that the tail was probably pretty flexible. There was no ossified tendons. So they probably used it as a weapon, and he said that they looked like a monkey tail with no locking joints so they could fatally stab. The plates seemed to overlap with the tail vertebrae, so that may have limited its movement somewhat. But again, there's been a lot of debate over the purpose of the plates. It was thought to be armor at first, but they're too fragile and they leave the sides of Stegosaurus unprotected. However, they may have made Stegosaurus look bigger and more menacing to predators, or impressive to female Stegosaurus, though both males and females had plates. They may also have helped control body temperature. They could have also been used for warning. Blood would brush to the plates, making them blush, a red warning, which could also be used to attract mates. Stegosaurus plates were not made of solid osteoderms, but had lattice-like structures and blood vessels. A 2005 analysis in paleobiology found the, quote, microstructure of the plates suggest they weren't used to radiate heat. A 2010 study published in the Swiss journal Geosciences found the plates may have passively helped control body temperature because the plates were so large with so many blood vessels, like how a toucan's bill naturally radiates body heat but it might not have been the main purpose. The size and shape of Stegosaurus plates help identify whether they were male or female. In general, it's really hard to tell whether dinosaurs are male or female. Reproductive organs and soft tissues are rarely found, so scientists guess based on modern animals. In 2015, and we covered this in a previous episode of the podcast, a study in PLOS One said that Stegosaurus fossils, Stegosaurus moose specifically, found in Montana with two types of plates, one was large and round versus the other was tall and spiky, were not different species but were actually just different genders. Yeah, and then they theorized that the larger round ones were probably the males since males are usually trying to attract the mate and they usually do that by having bigger, more ornate displays. The Stegosaurus fossils were found together, which shows they probably coexisted, and the plates had similar growth rings, so the dinosaurs were around the same age, and that proves that the plates didn't just change with age. Early on, scientists thought the tail spikes were upright, but now they think they stuck out to the sides. McWinney and his team published a study of tail spikes that showed that 9.8% of Stegosauruses examined had tail spike injuries, which helps support the idea that they fought with their tails. Also, an Allosaurus has been found with a punctured tail wound. That's really interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen a picture of a Stegosaurus with spikes going straight out to the sides, but it does make a lot of sense. Informally, Stegosaurus tail spikes are called thagomizers. After Gary Larson's Far Side cartoon was published in 1982 showing cavemen calling the spikes thagomizers, the line was, quote, Now this end is called the thagomizer after the late Thag Simmons. In 1977, paleontologists found a nearly complete juvenile stegosaurus at Dinosaur National Monument, the most complete one found so far, with limb bones, shoulder blades, most of the hips, some ribs, and skull fragments, and the cast is on display at the Quarry Exhibit Hall. 
You can see adult and juvenile Stegosaurus stenups at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, and they look like they're being attacked by an Allosaurus fragilis. You can see Stegosaurus ungulates at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or in the Nebraska Stage Museum in Lincoln, Nebraska. You can also see a Stegosaurus stenops, who's nicknamed Sophie, at the Natural History Museum in London. Stegosaurus has been in the media a lot. Starting in 1884, in an issue of Scientific American, it showed Marsh's first thoughts on Stegosaurus, uh, with an image of Stegosaurus with tail spikes on its back, back plates on its tail, and it's in a tripodal pose up on its hind legs and tail. In 1920, journalist W.H. Ballas wrote that Stegosaurus would flap its plates and glide through the air. <laughs> That's wonderful. In 1999, BBC's Walking with Dinosaurs gave Stegosaurus some frontal swagger to show the shortness of its forelimbs compared to its hind limbs. As of 1982, Stegosaurus is the state dinosaur of Colorado, and it became the state dinosaur of Colorado after a two-year writing campaign by thousands of fourth graders <laughs> requesting it. Stegosaurus also appears in Jurassic Park 2 and 3, and it also is one of the main characters in Land Before Time as Spike. And Spike likes to eat tree stars, as Garrett talked about later. <laughs> Spike has an interesting growth pattern in the movie, though, for anyone who's seen it, and maybe you hadn't noticed before, but after this, I'm sure you will notice. He is a tiny baby when he first hatches out of his eggs, the same size as Ducky, the small hadrosaur, but then he eats a few plants around his nests, and all of a sudden, he is large enough to carry Ducky. <laughs> yeah, it does not take long at all. And Spike, I think they did a pretty good job of showing him as the dumbest one of the group, <laughs> because he's constantly just kind of oafing around. All he wants to do is eat. <laughs> However, although Stegosaurus is pretty famous, there's less than two dozen types in the Stegosaurid family, so it's a kind of a rare type of dinosaur. Stegosaurus was, again, the first named genus in the Stegosauridae family, making it the type genus. Its closest relatives were Wuhosaurus from China and Kentrosaurus from East Africa. Stegosauridae is one of the two families in the infraorder Stegosauria. The other family is Huayangosauridae, and Stegosauridae skulls were shallower compared to Huayangosauridae, and there was a bigger difference between its short forelimbs and long hind limbs, and it had larger plates and tail spikes. Huayangosaurus is the only genus in Huayangosauridae, and it lived 20 million years before Stegosaurus. One lived 190 million years ago and had features of both Stegosaurus and Ankylosaurs. Stegosauria is in the suborder Thyreophora, which are armored dinosaurs that includes Ankylosaurs. Stegosauridae is further divided into two subfamilies, Decentrurinae and Stegosaurinae. Stegosaurinae are the larger ones. The earliest stegosaur is Lexovisaurus from England. Other small, lightly armored dinosaurs related to stegosaurs' direct ancestor include Emmasaurus from Germany, which is a small quadruped, and Scultilosaurus from Arizona, which was bipedal. A trackway of an early armored dinosaur from 195 million years ago was found in France. Stegosaurids lived in the late Jurassic to early Cretaceous. They were usually large, and the front legs were shorter than their back legs, so they were slow. They could probably shear branches with their teeth, and of course they're known for their plates and tail spikes. <laughs> 